Hello, everybody. Did you know that in some states, like Florida, North, and South Carolina, people literally walk on treasures scattered underground? And those treasures are shark teeth. Shark teeth are fascinating fossils. Holding a piece of a formidable predator is appealing, and shark teeth are weapons made to perfection during millions of years of evolution. In this video, we will review the most common types of shark teeth, have a close-up look at the specimens from our collection, and discuss the details of their structure. This is how a modern-day shark jaw looks like from the inside. The teeth are produced in rows. Tiny, young teeth start to form under the surface, inside the mouth, and slowly poke out while increasing in size. The front row of shark teeth is called the erect or functional row. Behind the functional row are five or more reserve rows. They consist of so-called replacement teeth. The shape of a mature shark tooth reflects the way it functions. Elongated smooth teeth are good for grasping. Triangular serrated teeth can effectively cut the flesh, and short teeth with massive base are well suited for crushing something. For instance, crabs or shells of bivalve mollusks. In their own way, shark teeth provide us with an evolutionary example of undeniable dietary connection between what we eat and how we look. Here we have upper and lower jaws from the same animal, and as you can see, they are clearly different. If you would not see the whole mouthpiece, you could describe these teeth as those that belong to a different species. Here is a tooth of a snaggletooth shark, one of the coolest fossils you can have in your collection. Look at the serrations. Teeth from the upper and lower jaws are distinctly different. The upper jaw teeth are definitely wider. Did you know that mako and white sharks are kind of warm-blooded creatures? They have a circulatory system that allows them to use the heat created by the muscles to warm up their bodies. As a result, their temperature is a few degrees higher than the ambient temperature. It gives them an edge, or advantage, over regular fish, especially in cold waters. However, it makes such sharks dependent on high-energy food, like the blubber of marine mammals. There are reports that the differences could be as high as 10 or even 20 degrees. When it comes to different tooth parts, both scientists and collectors use certain terminology. The root is a bony looking part with rough, porous surface at the base of the tooth. It was embedded into the shark's gum, ensuring the tooth's attachment to the shark's mouth. The root has two lobes on the sides. Notice the nutrient groove in the middle. The crown is the pointy part of the tooth that has a smooth and shiny surface. Cusplets, or cusps, are the tiny, underdeveloped baby crowns on the sides of the main crown, which is also called main or principal cusp. Borlet is the narrow layer of thin enamel located at the base of the crown, where it's connected to the root. It often has different coloration and shape resembling the letter V. This part of the tooth is embedded into the gum, but it had a very thin layer of enamel, and preservation of this layer is important in determining the quality of the specimen. So please, try to preserve the borlet when cleaning your findings. The common spelling is probably wrong, and it might have been originally named borlet, which is narrowish part of the artillery projectile. Collectors also call this part badge, or chevron, due to its V-shape. The scientists use the term neck instead of borlet. Here is a gorgeous piece from the mouth of a mako shark. Its streamlined shape reminds me of a dagger. Humans use the shark teeth to make their weapons. For instance, the famous Polynesian wooden clubs had a row of shark teeth along the edge to tear the enemy's flesh. They are also called war clubs, shark teeth swords, Koa fish hook weapons, or simply lay a mano. Try to imagine somebody running towards you wearing a helmet made from puffer fish and waving a stick covered with shark teeth. The lifespan of a shark tooth is somewhere between a week and a month. 
Interestingly, some shark species, like cookie cutter shark, lose the entire row of teeth at once. These sharks suck onto the prey skin with their lips, bite in with a round jaw, and spin around to curve out a circular chunk of flesh. The shark teeth are attached to the gums and have no connection to the jaw. In this way, they resemble nails rather than mammalian teeth. Hemipristis, or hemi for short, is snuggle to shark. Serrations on this are in pristine condition. An awesome specimen. I hope you enjoy it too. Sometimes teeth have unequal coloration. Such variations are called mottling. Mottling makes specimens more interesting for many collectors. The color of a fossilized shark, as well as any other fossil for that matter, depends on the mineral composition of the rocks in which the fossil spent so much time, literally millions of years. People who saw lots of shark teeth can have pretty good guess where it comes from. It's mostly based on the species and coloration. Exceptions are definitely possible. But let's say most of the Florida shark teeth are black. Those from North Carolina have a grayish color. Creamy, light brown teeth with a hint of orange are from Morocco. By the way, based on our experience, fossilized shark teeth from Florida and the Carolinas tend to have elevated levels of radioactivity. So, wearing a jewelry piece with a dark colored shark tooth would probably not be a good idea. Here are a few photos from Florida's localities. Casperson Beach is a perfect place to hunt for fossils. And these pictures were taken at creeks in Gainesville area, also in Florida. They have a great museum with several huge reconstructed jaws of the megalodon. This is a tooth from the mouth of a great white shark. Usually, such a coloration occurs in specimens from South America, Peru, and Chile. Please note that this video was not made to ID or identify the teeth, but rather to present the specimens in full glory. If you see a mistake in the species identification, please leave a comment. There will be a bunch of links in the description to this video to help you ID your specimens. Shark teeth are most often measured using the distance between a lobe of a root and the tip of a crown, essentially the longest distance between any two points of the tooth. The deformed or pathological teeth are rare. I would leave them to a scientist to study and rather have a perfectly shaped, fully functional hunting gear in my collection. Here are a few numbers to remember. Sharks first appeared a staggering 420 million years ago. They grow teeth in rows and produce about 10 to 20,000 teeth during their lifetime. The largest shark ever is called a megalodon and its estimated length is between 52 and 59 feet. Do you want to know what I think when I hold these fossils? I think that the shark that was shedding off its teeth in the ancient ocean had no idea and didn't really care that I'll be looking at its dentitions trying to somehow make a connection to a distant past. It reminds me of myself uploading videos and having no way to know what happened to them, who watched them, and what people think unless the viewers leave comments. And since, unlike the shark, I do care, please consider leaving some feedback. What type of shark teeth are your favorite? What fact about the shark surprised you? Did you hunt for fossilized shark teeth? And where? And what was your best find? Thanks for watching and good luck!